Next to Tuesday, very much all to play for a place in the final, of course, at stake. Frank Leboeuf uh, with us, as is uh, Jürgen Klinsmann. Uh, Jürgen, overall, Borussia Dortmund will be happy with their performance, obviously happy taking that lead to Paris, maybe disappointed that it wasn't a bigger deficit. Well, I think, you know, they can be happy. I think this is a great result going to Paris. It's not obviously uh, over by any means. You know, it was a, a very even game. I think uh, Paris Saint-Germain had their chances. Uh, Mbappé hit the corner, uh, the, the goalpost, and Hakimi. They had chances on both sides. It could have ended 2-3 for Paris Saint-Germain or 3-2 or for Borussia Dortmund. Uh, it's, it's open. It's open to play next week. But it's been, we've seen a very, very good game from both sides. Um, yeah, quality all over the place was very good to watch, was, was fun. Maybe just quality lacking in front of goal for both sides overall. The, uh, the goal that he scored, uh, Nicholas Fulkrug, was the most difficult of the chances that he yeah, had. Yeah, that touch was brilliant, wasn't it? The touch and the finish were excellent. The, 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 uh, the, the cutback from Jaden Sancho, all right, what, he had to take it on the volley, but this is the semi-final of the Champions League. As Ali said, he's leaning back. Then he had a header as well. It was a little unlucky with. He could have, he could easily had a hat trick, but then you know they Paris Saint Germain created the chances as well. We saw it on the clips there. Uh, they were also uh, dangerous, but yeah, I think both will not be too disheartened. Uh, I mean, great atmosphere over this stadium. If, the, if you did atmospheres, this was this is yeah. a place. Fantastic pictures with that yellow wall behind the goal. Uh, Jaden Sancho's performance. Mm -hmm. I think Adiemi on a Hakimi. I think both PSG fullbacks at times really struggled, and. Dortmund, for a, even though there was chances for PSG, they actually looked quite solid when they sat a little deeper. They sat in a good shape because they had that pace and the wider positions to hit on the mm -hmm. counter-attack, which is not always their game. But they looked pretty solid defensively, which don't, you don't normally talk about with Dortmund. Uh, at times, obviously, PSG cut them open now and again. You're going to get that with quality players. But if I was Dortmund, I'd also be quite encouraged by the spaces and, and, and opportunities that particularly Hakimi and Mendes gave the wide players. That's encouraging from Dortmund for the second leg. I think a lot of encouraging. We, we saw Arsenal retreat to their shell, didn't we? A against Bayern Munich over the two legs. Borussia Dortmund could have done the same against PSG. They didn't. They went toe-to-toe -to -toe and they got their reward for it. I think Borussia Dortmund, while I agree that they'll be happy that they've won the game, I think they may be disappointed that indeed this wasn't by more than one goal, given the opportunities that were available to them. And yes, PSG had some chances, but there were some moments in which PSG turns the ball over in a really bad area, whether it's Vitinha or Fabian Ruiz or even Hakimi turning the ball in a bad area, and now Dortmund are going, and it's, it's 3v2, it's 4v3, and they just weren't able to find the right pass or the right connection. And even when they did create the clear opportunities, and I agree wholeheartedly with the, what was going on the outside, once Jadon Sancho figured out Nuno Mendes can't stop me, and he figured that out rather early in the game, I'm going after this guy because there's no chance he can stay with me. Defensively, Nuno Mendes, he is vulnerable. He can be exposed, and Jadon Sancho did that time and time again. As for Yemi, I would say, as much as it's impressive the work that he did offensively, defensively, the recovery runs, recovery runs on the outside, controlling with his speed, controlling then the involvement or lack thereof of Hakimi in the attack because he was willing to track back on Hakimi because he was willing to track back on Dembele as well and controlling the outside, which then forces everything from PSG towards the inside. And here's my thing with PSG in the attack. It confuses me. It befuddles me. I don't understand why Kylian Mbappe, who's one of main asset, one of his main strength is his speed, his dynamic movement over distance in behind keeps coming to the ball. I don't get it. I don't understand it. If you're a center back, if you're Mats Hummels and Nico Schlotterbeck, right? When are you most uncomfortable? When Kylian Mbappe is over there, 15 yards in front of you where you can see him? Or when he's off your shoulder trying to get him behind? Uh, when he runs into the space of Enrique Chamo, Marcel Savitzer, when he can now be crowded out and he's dropping off as a playmaker, Kylian Mbappe for PSG should not be a playmaker. He should be a difference maker. And if he's going to be a difference maker, he's got to be running in behind and testing the mismatch of speed with Mats Hummels and Nico Schlotterberg. That made it a whole lot easier for Borussia Dortmund to defend. Thinking about the, I don't know, I can't remember if it was on the clip or not, the, the chance, and by the way, it was a 
marvellous challenge from Marquinhos mm. yes. on the Julian Brandt yep. one on one and the only thing he did wrong he took a touch he could have, if he'd taken it first time Marquinhos cannot make the challenge again it was the Sancho ball for, for the diagonal run and it got in behind them but I think one of the things Dortmund before we go just briefly before we go to Frank one of the things Dortmund did well they did not allow the two centre backs who are not the quickest certainly Max Hamels to be exposed mm -hmm. they did not allow them to be left with acres of space either in front of them or behind them. So actually, in terms of the defensive display today, for the most part, they were pretty solid and that allowed them to get a little bit of base going forward. Frank LeBeuf. Yeah, I think I have an answer for, for Ali. I think um, Terzic worked very well his, uh, his game and um, he, he didn't allow to give spa uh, spaces behind behind uh, uh, Dortmund defense and uh, worked on this uh, on the depth that uh, Kylian Mbappe couldn't get and it's why he got frustrated and came back and as Ali said tried to be the playmaker where it's not his game. But what struck me the the, uh, the most for me is why Luis Enrique decided to put Dembélé in the middle of, almost in the middle of the park. Uh, if he's not as a striker in the first half. We saw that he changed second half and put him, as we see now, on the right mm. side. And he changed the game. So many chances that he had. He said that he has the most destabilizing player in the world at his disposal, but didn't use him uh, as the right, uh, the right position. So I was very uh, amazed and, and um, surprised by his decision. After that, Oh, no, credit to Dortmund. I think a draw should have been fair, but Dortmund did very well with the, uh, with the, with the fans that they had, uh, the stadium behind them. They, they put the pressure at the beginning of the game. Paris Saint-Germain didn't exist. They tried to find something, and because of the change of positioning of Dembélé, I think it was much better for Paris Saint-Germain in the second half. They should have scored. They should have scored. Dembélé should have scored at least one goal. They had seven clear chances. And maybe Jürgen and Ali can talk about that more than us. Uh, I'm talking about Craig and myself. But when you are strikers, you know, you have easy <laughs> chances to score. And as Craig mentioned, it's semi-final of the Champions League. It's not the game you have on Sunday morning with friends. Uh, uh, Jürgen, take us through that first goal, the, well, the only goal, and how impressive that touch is from Fulkrug. This is, uh, yeah, a message from Fulkrug also, not only, you know, at, at, for, for his own Dortmund team, for obviously for this Champions League moment, special, very special mm. moment. It's also a message to Julian Jagersmann with the German national team and telling him, listen, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for the European Championship as well. Yeah, show him that. Not, maybe not the misses bit. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hopefully Nagelsmann was in the bathroom for that bit. <laughs> he would have seen that. Uh, Jürgen, what's it like to play in front of that yellow wall as an opposition? It must be incredible. <laughs> It is uh, so much fun. I mean, this stadium rocks. I mean, it's the, the, the noise that they make, the support that Borussia Dortmund has throughout the decades is unbelievable because the, the people, a similar bit to Liverpool in England, they just, they just love their club. It means everything to them. And this yellow wall with 28,000 people always full, every Bundesliga game is sold out with 80,000 people. I mean, it gives them tremendous support, gives them energy, gives them confidence. Um, and yeah, help them, I think, to to win this game today 1-0, even if obviously PSG had their chances and it could have gone or uh, ended up a bit differently. But this this uh, crowd in Dortmund is exceptional. What about Sancho? Eh? Well, that's where I was going next. How do you explain it? Well, he was excellent today, yeah? I think we all agree that. Yeah, terrific. Yeah. A little patch early on. Uh, not his work rate, just his possession. Mm. First 20 minutes and then after that, he was absolutely terrific, uh, particularly in the second half. Ali said he was he had Mendes on toast. As soon as he got him one and one, little drop of the shoulder, step over past him. It, it, it's a hard one. Look, why is he playing like this? And where and I know everybody's going to be thinking the same question. Where was this guy at Manchester United? So now you have to look at environment, uh, their team, which is clearly not as good as Dortmund. So the supporting cast is not as good. Man management. We know that's been certainly very public, the, the spat. Mm -hmm. And then you have to look at the player himself. He's not, he doesn't get away uh, scot-free with, you know, oh, it was Eric Ten Hag, it was Manchester United, it was the midfield, it was all this. So I think there's been a little bit of, of everything in there. And there's no doubt the player did not want to back down, right? When, and United needed him. I mean, they could, they could certainly do with a performance yeah. of a player like this because they really don't have much, Garnacho aside. Uh, 
But I think it just has to be the environment of he feels, and maybe just that's the way this young guy is. He feels, he feels, and I'm not saying it's right because when you go to a club, they pay you wages. You should really be going out there and rolling your sleeves up. And if you have a spat with the manager, then at Damn. the end of the day, he's the boss. But it, it seems to me he is very happy at this club. He is feels he's treated right at this club, and we're seeing that in some, not all of his performance, but certainly in these performances in the big game. And we, and it's not as if we had a very small sample at Man United of, of three or four months. No, exactly. For a couple of years at least. Yeah. And we really, really did not see this with any consistency whatsoever. And people say, oh yeah, but the Bundesliga's lower standard than the Premier League, no, blah, 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 whatever. This no, is this Champions is League Bundes semi-final. No, no, that's nothing to do with it. That is nothing to do with it. Uh, go on, Frank, sorry. Do you want to say something? Yeah, yeah, I think I... Think I I understand what's going on in his mind, and uh, it's a mentality. We all play away from home. Uh, we all been foreigners, pl foreign players, and we know that we take the place of a domestic player. Therefore, you have to prove two times or three times more than when you play in your domestic league. Domestic league. And when Jadon Sancho plays for Dortmund, he knows that he's an English guy playing in Germany, and he has to prove every day, week in, week out. And we've been there, uh, Jürgen in, uh, in Monaco, in, uh, in, in Italy, in England, uh, Ali in, uh, in the state, um, Craig in England, and myself in England. We have to prove more than a domestic player. Therefore, the pressure is bigger, and therefore, you are more performant, I would say, and it's what is going on for Jadon Sancho. The other thing that you can say, and it's not just specific to Jadon Sancho, is really across the board with Borussia Dortmund, you can ask that same question. How come we don't see this every weekend in Bundesliga competition? This, and we don't have to go two weekends ago. We don't have to go a month ago. Just this past weekend. Leipzig, yeah. Against Leipzig. In what, and they're trying to get into the top four and whether they're going to be in Champions League or not. And the, the, and, and the coefficient and so on and so forth. But it was a matchup that you would think would get the attention of Borussia Dortmund, and they got destroyed. And when I say destroyed, I mean they got taken to pieces by Leipzig. And so maybe I'm too far into the Bundesliga forest to appreciate the nuances and the differences between what we see from this team in Champions League and what we see in Bundesliga. Maybe I'm jaded, because what I see from this team in Bundesliga every single weekend it's nothing like this. And in fact, a friend of mine who's a friend of, uh, who's a, a fan of Borussia Dortmund reached out and said, this is the best performance of the season. And yes, yes it is. I don't know where it comes from, but yes it is. And, and, and you see this team running with intensity and with energy. And we highlighted Adeyemi, but you can also say the same thing about Emre Can. You can also say the same thing about Savitzer. You're seeing players that are elevating their performance in Champions League and somehow they're unable to maintain it domestically. We don't see this and we haven't seen it from Borussia Dortmund with any sort of consistency in Bundesliga. But in Champions League, a different team, perhaps because the expectations in Champions League are not what they are in Bundesliga. In Bundesliga, they're expected, expected to be at the top. And when they're not, it's disappointment. But now in Champions League, every time they play, it's like playing with house money. It's like, we're not supposed to be here, so we're just gonna give it a, we're just going to give it a go and see what happens. And with that approach, they've been successful. Uh, Jürgen, just going back to Jadon Sancho, what do you make of the whole situation? Mm. Well, I love the kid, really. I mean, we talked about him a couple of months ago and, and he struggled a bit coming back there from, from Man United and it takes time. But then step by step, kind of, he felt yeah, home again, home in Dortmund with his uh, older teammates and, and the environment. He knows everybody and, and, and obviously he's trying to find his form, he's trying to find his fitness, uh, which for his game is very, very crucial. Uh, he has his pace back, uh, he's creative again. And then he's a, he's a difference maker. But as uh, Alejandro said rightfully, you know, the key is uh, for these teams is always to find uh, the continuity in, in their performances week in, week out with their domestic leagues. You know? And Dortmund was not capable this year to, to play well in the Bundesliga overall. You know, they struggled and you know, nobody expected that run from Bayer Leverkusen. That's a big surprise, certainly. But um, somehow they could focus on the Champions League in a, in a, in a different way and and got their games out of the way, and now they have a chance. They have a chance to get into the final to Wembley. Um, and I think Jaden is, is a good example for this kind of uh, yeah, unbalance that the team shows over the entire season. Um, so there might be a chance to play the Champions League final, but uh, 
you finish off uh, poorly for their standards, poorly in the Bundesliga. You've got two clubs struggling in England with two mm. players loaned out. Matson from Chelsea, mm -hmm. and they're, you know, we know they have been bang average. And, and Jaden Sancho from Manchester United, which wasn't a surprise move because it was so toxic, it seemed behind the scenes. But we know the managers watch every game. Ten Hag would have been watching that, sitting thinking, my God, what, you know, yeah. I, 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 have I done something wrong? Have I not managed it? Or did he, was it? Was it irretrievable? Did he just not want to be here? You know, he'll be sitting sort of banging his head and they'll all think, why, why couldn't I get, why couldn't I manage to get this out of this player? But again, I say it, maybe maybe it was partly down to... Maybe it wasn't all Ten Hag's fault. Maybe mm -hmm. it was partly down to the player himself. But you have to give him credit for that. That was an outstanding, uh, wide uh, wide performance tonight from a, from a pacey, tricky, uh, wide player. And the thing is that Jadon Sancho would help Manchester United and Ten Hag even be even more dynamic. Yes, Even yes, more entertaining. entertaining. Yeah, exactly. Hey. Uh, Jürgen, how would you feel if you were Ten Hag at home watching this? Yeah, as Craig said, I would feel a bit sad. I mean, I said, shit, you know, I didn't get this game, this kid going the way I should have, or it didn't perform the way we hoped to. But they are really, as Craig said, there could be thousands of reasons for that. Maybe the locker room is a completely different one. The, the, the place is a different one. Maybe he didn't feel so much at home in that moment, you know, in his time of his career. You know, it could be that he might be was two or three years too early in Manchester United. So he feels at home in Dortmund, step by step, he finds his form again and now shows us the performances that we are used to see from him. Uh, but it's, uh, uh, it's, it's very difficult for, for managers and coaches to, uh, to analyze these performances of players because behind the scene, there are so many elements that might don't work. You know, maybe the chemistry of, of the team, the, the, his best friends within the team, uh, Within the club, they have, yeah, the, the, the spirit that is there. And there's so many little pieces that, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out your way. Jürgen won the World Cup. He's allowed to swear. But you're not allowed to, Frank. Don't start. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look ahead, shall we, to the, the second half, uh, the second leg. Uh, Frank, I imagine you're still confident the PSG will advance? Yes, I am. Yes, I am, because I, I think that... Uh, Overall, uh, there are more qualities than, uh, than Dortmund. Dortmund, I think, is going to not park the bus, but defend well, uh, back uh, and deep, and uh, they're going to wait for it. Um, they are one goal ahead. They lead, they, they, they lead by one goal. So they're going to wait for Paris Saint-Germain. They're going to try maybe to get something out of it, like they, they scored the goal to, tonight. But overall, I think they're going to create... Mbappé is going to hopefully wake up because we didn't see him today. Um, and, um, and we're going to see a better Vitinha because in the middle of the park also it's very, it, the guy is very important. Uh, he's been very important lately. Uh, yeah, I give big chances to Paris Saint-Germain. I think they are for me the, the favourites to, uh, to win that second leg and, uh, and, get, uh, and, get, and go through. Frank, we talked about the atmosphere obviously in Dortmund. It will be slightly different in Paris, won't it? A bit more of, of expectation. Well, the pressure is going to be bigger, that's for sure, for the, the Paris Saint-Germain players. But, uh, I mean, it's one game to the final, so the fans are going to be crazy as well. It's a great atmosphere, in, <laughs> atmosphere in, at, at the Parc des Princes. Not the same as uh, at the Westfalen Stadium, of course, but, uh, but it's going to be big, it's going to be huge. It's a great moment for the players and for the fans, for the, the city of Paris and for France overall to have another final. Marseille plays tomorrow, can also go to a European uh, um, Europa League, uh, Europa League sorry, uh, final. So it can be good for France. So every, every, everybody's going to be behind Paris Saint-Germain and Marseille and the uh, fans are gonna get, can get very happy. How would you chop it up percentage-wise, Frank? Uh, 65-35 for Paris uh, Saint-Germain. Jürgen, I imagine you're going 51-49, aren't you, to Dortmund? Yeah, absolutely. Correct. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> but given what we saw in the first leg, there is every single chance that they can go to Paris and get it done, isn't there? Well, I think, you know, it's, it's a totally open game. I mean, you know, any team could have scored a couple more goals tonight. It was a very mm. good game. It was fun to watch. Um, but uh, as uh, Frank said, rightfully so, it, we, we, we're waiting a little bit for Mbappé. <laughs> we're waiting for Mbappé to, to show his, his, his real face. I mean, obviously, he's, he, he almost scored a goal. He hit the post. But 
But there's more to come from Kylian Mbappé in the second leg. And this is something that obviously concerns Borussia Dortmund. They will play a lot more defensive in the second leg. They will not give him any space to run into. I think it played into their hands uh, today that uh, Mbappé mostly came through the middle, didn't find mm. any space in the middle, you know, against the center backs and the two defensive midfielders. You know, I was surprised that they didn't move him out to the, to the left side. Uh, even when uh, uh, Kolo Muani came on, you know, we thought that they actually now he goes to the left side and, and starts to sprint the, the side up and down. But it will be it will be a nail biter. But the difference maker, I think, will be Kylian Mbappe. Jürgen, do you think the fact he's leaving at the end of the season makes any difference for him psychologically in these matches? Um, I could imagine. So yes, I mean, at his level, I mean, you want to leave if you leave, obviously. Uh, to such a club like Real Madrid, if you're going to leave, you want to leave on a high note. You want to give your people something. And this is, this is what they're waiting for. Since 10 years, they're waiting for in Paris for the Champions League title. And uh, he's, he's going to be very, very hungry. He will be highly motivated. Uh, I mean, 1-0 is a nice result for Borussia Dortmund, but he, he, he knows that he can turn that around. I think there's a big pressure on him to, mm. to answer that question to leave with something tangible. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they have to win this competition. But with a performance. Yeah. But he has to at least show that he has dragged this team as far as possible. And he ha and let's be truthful about this. Forgetting league on, he hasn't really done it, particularly in the knockout stages of this competition. I mean, yeah, it was a bit better the second leg against Barcelona, but Ronald Rojo was off. It was, it was 11 against 10. It was at home, they were more, they were more open. That, that's not a fair assessment. And, and again, tonight, it was bits and pieces here and there. Yes, hit the frame of the goal. So I think the crowd will be waiting for something. And I think in his mind as well, he'll also be... And maybe that's, to, to some extent, a little bit detrimental, that he's maybe trying to do things that, you know, I need to get out, I need to make sure I go out, and go out with a blast, I need to make sure I do this, I do that. And that might go against the ethics of what's best for the team. So it's a real... Uh, balancing act here, but certainly we haven't, and in, in the last two or three games in this competition, we certainly have not seen the best of them. If I was Borussia Dortmund, I think PSG for me are still slight favourites. I would be extremely confident of going there as long as my shape was good yeah. and waiting to pick your moment, a bit like I thought PSG would do in this game, but we're not able to, to pick your moment on the counter with these pacey wide players. But these are the moments though. If you're killing Mbappe, this is what defines you as a player. This sort of moments. This is what defines you as one of the best players in the world. And I think we can all agree that he's one of the most dynamic and explosive players in the world. And you cannot go in the second leg of a semifinal Champions League quietly. That cannot be the case. So rotation. Go find spaces out wide. Be in the middle. Come to the ball. Get in behind. Little diagonal movement. Go to the right-hand side. Go to the left. You cannot go quietly. You cannot make it easy for Hummels and Schlotterbeck. You cannot make it easy for Borussia Dortmund. Appear in different places. Be off the shoulder, on the blind side of defenders, in between the inside shoulder of the outside back and the outside shoulder of the center back. You can't just stand 10, 15 yards away from the center backs and try to play make and resolve the issue from there. There's got to be more level of activity for Kylian Mbappe, and these are the moments that demand the very best from him. The French, the French supporters look at him like like the fans of Barcelona and Real Madrid looked at Ronaldo and Messi. Mm -hmm. The two greatest players of the generation, head and shoulders, by far. By far. They both delivered. And always, not always, but I, you know, I would good say a good 90% of the time, when their team was in the Sturm, we were struggling, and it was the big time competition, one of those guys generally stood up for their team and was the difference maker. It's now, it's his time. But it's certainly not a foregone conclusion if PSG are going to make it through to the final.